Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar presentation from Isolated to Integrated, Removing Silos and Contract Management in the Back Office. So the first part of the presentation will be an overview of Paystream's latest findings around contract management um, and how organizations today are managing and improving their processes. Then we'll talk about how software can be used to build a more holistic environment around contract management for settled processes that um, promote business success. And then we will hear about um, a real-world transformation from our case study participant who will talk about how her company use contract management automation to improve um, their business operations. We'll have a few minutes at the end for questions, so if you have any, please submit those in our Q&A box. All right, so let me introduce today's presenters. For Paystream, um, I will be presenting our portion of the presentation. My name is Anna Barnett. I'm a research associate with Paystream, and I've been with the company for about five years now. We also have Chris Colburn, who's a product manager in business, of business solutions at Determine. How are you doing today, Chris? I'm doing great. Excited to be here. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, we also have Amy Foss. She is a National Director of Procurement and Plant Operations at Watermark Retirement Communities. Um, and she's going to present the case study um, portion of our presentation today. How are you, Amy? I'm great. Thanks, Anna. I'm really excited to speak to you today on behalf of the senior housing industry. Great. Thank you both for joining us. So before we get started, I'd like to give you a little bit of background on Paystream. For those of you who aren't familiar, we are a team of experts in all things back office processes and software, and that includes sourcing, supply chain, procurement, accounts payable, payments, expense management, um, et cetera. We use our expertise to help um, subscribers and clients in a number of ways. The first is through our free research reports and tools, which are on our website, paystreamadvisors.com, and that's where a lot of the data that I'm going to discuss in my portion of the presentation um, comes from. So these reports cover industry trends and adoption rates um, on things like contract management um, and or finance technology in general, and they also profile leading solutions for you to take a look at. Another way we help our clients is through thought leadership um, via speaking engagements like this presentation that we're doing today. And we do webinars like this almost every week. And even if you can't attend a live event, they're always available on demand on our website. We also help our clients through our advisory services, which is when we help companies plan for automation with current state analysis and needs assessments. We help them build an ROI case for automation. And we help them choose the right solution. Um, sometimes we will even stick around for implementation and help things go smoothly from there as well. All right, let's get going. All right, I'm going to start off the presentation by going over some of Paystream's latest research findings around contract lifecycle management. And this data comes from surveys that we conducted over several hundred um, business professionals, um, mostly in back office departments and across a variety of roles. Um, and these professionals came from companies in several different industries and um, across all revenue segments. So first, let's get a general assessment of the way that contracts are being managed among today's organizations. Um, as you can see on the slide, almost one-third of companies are using a contract management solution to manage that process, which is great. Among the rest, we see that 42% of companies have one team that manages all contracts, and 31% lean on individual departments to manage their own contracts. Now, I want to set the stage here um, by saying that both groups within uh, the companies that are not using a solution fall under what we would call siloed contract management, but in different ways. Um, the first, the 31%, with decentralized contract management, they're managing their contracts separately from each other, and they're siloing their processes um, in many uh, areas as far as communication and um, maybe synchronization of data. There's going to be a great deal of varying information between the parties, um, on their contract management needs and the content that is important to them. And there's going to be a little visibility and communication between stakeholders, um, which can create big problems for many different areas, including the source to settle process in particular. It can grow more complicated depending on the organization. Um, and sometimes decentralization and lack of synchronization and information can put companies at risk with their suppliers, their supply chain management, um, 
their financial stability in some cases. The second group, the 42%, they have a centralized method for managing contracts, but they are siloing themselves from many stakeholders in the process under a manual process. So while both of these current states can work in their own ways, if they don't have a system in place that truly supports the integration between all parties, um, there's going to be a lot of difficulty in communication and efficiency, especially around source to settle processes. So we're going to focus on the different difficulties that come with these different current states um, today, and I'm going to get into that a little bit more in the next slide. All right, in this slide, let's take a look at how contracts are being passed back and forth between departments um, and different members. Now, like I said, this is going to vary by company, especially um, by the different characteristics um, of the company, such as number of contracts, type of contracts, number of locations. Um, the most common method that companies are using to pass their, their contracts is email. And that's a pretty common theme across back office document management, especially when companies don't have a system in place and even sometimes um, even if they have automation in place, they'll still use email in some cases. Email is one of the most secure methods for sharing documents um, outside of a specific system built for it, and it's fairly quick. Um, only 13% of respondents were actually using a contract management solution for sharing contracts, and 10% were manually sharing their paper contracts. So as you know, with contracts, there's always going to be many different parties involved in drafting, reviewing, approving, monitoring contracts, not only from within, but also without your organization, such as your suppliers. Um, now, the best case scenario for managing contracts between all of these parties is with a solution. Not only do you have a secure tool for passing the documents, um, but you can use it for things like um, approval workflows, authoring. You have a system that keeps track of the movement of the contract, how it changes from one user to another, what users are actually touching it. Um, and I've been engaged with, with um, some, some, some consulting clients with PayStream over the last few years, and I've seen that when companies are wanting a current state assessment of how they're managing contracts, there's um, usually a very diverse current state that's going on, and there's a mix of email and manual sharing of contracts. It's not usually just one or the other. Sometimes it depends on the urgency of um, the contract one day a member can email one to the appropriate person for a review or feedback. And the next day a member might need immediate review of the contract and they're going to print out the document and they're going to dash to a desk of someone in another department. So the point of that is that without a secure system to help connect different members, the security of the information and the quality and the precision and the control that you have can vary. And you need something that can be flexible, and help you as your circumstances vary, as the urgency of contracts, as the um, sort of sensitivity of the data within different types of contracts varies. You want something that can be flexible with that, especially when you're dealing with contracts that are related to uh, supply chain processes, such as pricing contracts um, that your sourcing team might help you develop, um, maybe involving a very important supplier vital to your supply chain operations. So I want to take a break here and bring Amy in. Um, I want to ask you on your own experience about this. Before you adopted a contract management solution, how are you typically managing contract sharing between your, your different departments and your members? So, Emma, we were using a Outlook inbox, and it was collectively known as the black hole here at our company. We had no visibility and lots of contracts were being submitted with errors and we had no way to really route the contracts through workflow for signatures and I'll talk more about that a little later. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that lines up with a lot of um, what we've seen as well and it's definitely not the most efficient method. So to back up a little bit of what I was saying in that um, previous slide, this figure shows just how varied other parts of the contract management process are, in this case, the authoring process. Um, in some cases, the legal department authors all contracts, which is a decent uh, strategy as it enables centralization and control from a team that's very highly qualified to draw up contracts as they have the expertise, um, the knowledge on hand, and they're, they're making sure that those contracts are supportive and compliant with the business objectives. So the legal team is very important in this process. Um, but other organizations have a few different methods. Depending, again, on the company, 
Um, some are drafting contracts from scratch as they're authoring with one author. Some use old contracts and they may just copy and paste and um, tweak current contracts to fit with the situation. Some have several different parties all engaged in authoring the contract at once. There's really no incorrect method for authoring a contract, um, and it depends on your own needs and your business structure. What's important here is whether you're using the right tool to support your authoring methods. There are a lot of variables that go into contracts, and there's a lot of different goals from different parties within your company. Um, and that's whether they're different departments or members of the C-suite or um, members engaged in different parts of the source to set a life cycle. The important thing to realize here is that when different parties are siloed from each other and contracts are authored without a good way of collaborating and consolidating these members' goals, um, as well as important maybe supply chain-related information, these contracts are going to suffer. Um, the second thing here is that when you're offering the contracts manually, no matter how many authors are involved, chance to put together accurate, compliant, and high-quality documents, really. Um, but when you're using contract management authoring tool, as you can see 19% of our respondents are using, you can accommodate many different collaborator collaborators and many different goals of those collaborators with things like authoring tools, version tracking, um, clause libraries, which brings in the legal team, and other things. Um, and if this tool is also integrated with your source to settle processes, you're going to further increase the value of your data. Um, and I'm going to get into that a little bit more uh, later. I want to touch on the importance of the legal team quickly here because they do play such an important role in the co contract authoring process for many companies. Um, as you can see in this figure, the majority of our respondents do have a dedicated legal team in their organization. And that means that there's a good chance that these companies are running their contracts through that legal department and that that legal department is concerned with the accuracy and validity of the contracts. Some companies are very focused on engaging that team within the life cycle, um, but executing that is not always as simple as it seems, um, and they're not always successful in really doing that efficiently. As you saw in the previous slides, some hand their contracts to the legal team to author from the get-go, and while this creates a point of sort of secure data from the very beginning, it also further perpetuates the siloed contract management style um, and what if your current authoring methods aren't quite in line with this? What if you prefer or you necessarily have several different authors engaged in the contracts? So you want to make sure that you take your legal team in mind when you're trying to improve your processes and that you find a tool that connects the power and the relevance of your legal team with other members in a secure, collaborative environment. So now that I've kind of given you um, a first look at the current state of contract management, I want to take a break for our first poll question and get a sense of what your current state is. So we want to know, um, what are you currently using to manage your own contracts? Um, are you using sort of traditional, very manual tools like spreadsheets, uh, Microsoft Word, SharePoint? Do you have a strategic solution suite, um, maybe cloud-based, that offers you some some functionality for that. Are you using just a point solution, whether that's cloud-based or on-premise or something like that? Do you have a homegrown system that you developed in-house? Or are you um, very old school and still using paper and file cabinets? Or if you don't know, that's fine. So I'll give you a few moments to answer that question. Okay, thank you everyone for taking that poll question. Um, that's the first of two, and we'll get to the other one a little bit later. Now I can see we have um, several different results and that some of you are using more traditional methods like spreadsheets and um, even paper. And this figure is, um, this addresses sort of the challenges among our survey respondents that we're also using manual methods so they don't have um, an in-house contract management solution. And as you can see, the biggest um, challenge that they're facing with manual methods is, is inconsistency among contracts. Uh, they're also saying that their management process is cumbersome and very costly, that it has an effect on their business processes and maybe supply chain continuity, and that they're experiencing risks associated with errors on their contracts. So maybe some of these look familiar. I'm sure that they do, especially if you're using um, some of the manual methods. Um, a lot of these can be eradicated with, with a better method. Before we get into that, I want to bring in Chris and... I know that you deal with a lot of companies that are operating on highly manual methods 
and that's why they come to you. So do any of these problems look familiar, and are you seeing any others that maybe we didn't include on in our survey? Yeah, so I think these are pretty common uh, problems that prospects or customers have before they move to a solution. Um, but I did want to point out there's actually a lot of other benefits kind of besides these. So just off the top of my head, I think you have budgets against your contract, the ability in a tool to easily see the information in a contract without having to download and read it all, uh, purchasing against that contract, being able to manage renewals, expirations, evergreen contracts. So there's a lot of other benefits besides just what we see here uh, for moving to a tool. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. So this slide goes a little bit deeper into the challenges around the contract management process, but not just ch challenges from manual processes, but also challenges um, when you're dealing with a siloed process and when your contract management is siloed from your other key business initiatives. So if any of these look familiar, then it probably means that your contract management process is a little too siloed. Um, some of the signs, your contracts are created using outdated document processors, such as Microsoft Word, um, SharePoint, um, uh, my, the Excel spreadsheet tool, um, and then how are you storing those contracts? Are they stored in PDF or even paper, um, maybe in filing cabinets? Do you have an easy way to locate those um, when different departments are requesting contracts that your department manages? How easy is it for you to share that document with them? Um, do all contract changes require the inter intervention of the legal team? And that's a little bit what I was speaking about earlier. Um, it's very efficient to have your legal team highly involved in the contract management and the authoring process in particular. But how hard is it for you to move contracts from the legal team? How hard is it for you to collaborate with the legal team and to move contracts that might be of high urgency on if you have to go through sort of that that barrier or that roadblock. Um, sometimes it's a bottleneck into efficient uh, contract management process and it can hurt even supply chain or supplier relationships. Um, and maybe you are frequently missing your contract expiration dates. That's a big problem when you've got decentralized and siloed contract management. You have a little visibility into the different milestones and contract requirements and when things are expiring. Um, what suppliers are expecting of you when you need to renew and when even you need to renegotiate contracts. Maybe it's no longer um, a contract that's really competitive for your business or beneficial to your business. So the more siloed you are, the more likely it is that you're experiencing these problems um, to a high degree. Now this slide kind of takes the reverse of that. So. When you use an integrated source of settle solution that offers you contract lifecycle management automation, you're getting rid of a lot of the challenges um, that you may experience if you are using siloed processes. Um, with a tool, contracts are created using a software that allows collaboration between different parties. And that includes things like pre-configured pre templates that all your members have gotten together and agreed that you have collaborated with the legal department to set up. Um, it also often gives you the ability to create contracts from scratch as well, but you've still got the the um, power to collaborate with different members and get their feedback on those new contracts and to make sure that everything is compliant with different departments' goals, with your supply chain needs, with your source of settle efficiency, and with your legal team's needs. Um, another great change is that you have the ability to store contracts in a single central repository. So if you're a company that's dealing with paper, um, high volumes of paper, if you have things in file cabinets, or if you just have different members storing their own contracts on different computers and you don't know where everything is and you don't have a way to easily access something that, that you maybe should have the ability to access, um, these solutions offer you one place to do that. They also usually offer pretty advanced search tools um, to allow you to take a, a really um, deep dive into different um, contract terms, maybe search by tags and uh, filters and date ranges, things like that. And I got into this a little bit earlier, but these tools offer you authoring, um, authoring tools that allow you to track changes on contracts. They allow you to use um, tools you're already familiar with, such as Microsoft Word, but it's integrated within the system. So you can work with different members on putting together um, contracts from scratch. 
Also, they usually include things like clause libraries, and these are things that the legal team has worked with the software provider to set up so that everything is, is complete and compliant with, with their expectations, but it allows other members to pull in um, pre-approved clauses so that they don't have to send things to the legal team and maybe wait weeks for the legal team to be able to get to that contract to approve and to edit and adjust. Um, you can have all members collaborating on the same um, item, and you can give other members the power to do um, what before only the legal team could do. Um, and finally, when you're dealing with these expiration dates that are coming, you know, a little visibility, um, it creates a lot of problem with staying compliant with contract terms. But these solutions send you automatic notifications on looming expiration dates, um, even milestones, um, and you can set those expiration dates uh, based on different user by role. Um, if you want to make sure that other members are aware of different things, and you can set them by priority. Um, and there's a lot more that these solutions can offer you, and we're going to get into that in a minute. But first, let's go into a little bit more um, of what we found in the survey data. This figure goes a little bit more into the relationship between contract management um, and sourcing. And it shows you that companies who do automate, they're under certain pressures and they have priorities. Um, the top priority is to reduce costs and increase savings in their back office and between the sourcing and contract management process. Um, the second one is to gain more visibility into contract status details, terms, and expiration dates. And the third is to reduce paper and consolidate and outdate irrelevant duplicate contracts. And I wanted to just include this figure um, and go over it very quickly just to further confirm that these companies are concerned with, with things that um, are related to the efficiency between the sourcing and the contract management process and that a lot of the, the problems that contract management solutions solve um, help to create better unity between these two. So let's take a quick break and go into our second poll question. Now for this poll question, once again, we want to see if your current state aligns with some of the things that we've been talking about. And we want to know what your biggest pain point is regarding contract management. Um, Maybe it's real-time access to verified contract data. Maybe you have cumbersome onboarding validation processes. Uh, maybe your legal department creates bottlenecks uh, because of linear supplier onboarding and contract creation processes. Maybe you have a lack of awareness on expiring or renewing contracts like we talked about earlier. And again, if you don't know, you can just say that. But I'll give you a few moments to go over that. All right, thank you everyone again for taking that poll question. Um, we have some varied results, and it looks like a lot of your challenges are in line with um, things we've seen in our surveys and um, from my own engagements with companies like yours. Um, this figure shows you sort of some of the challenges and how they go away when you implement a contract management solution. So these are from that same survey, and they're companies that have adopted um, an advanced contract management solution or a source to set of suite. And the top benefit that they've achieved is improved ability to manage contract renewals. Um, the other ones were improved compliance with regulations, reduction in legal labor costs, and more consistent adherence to contract guidelines. Um, I think it's important to mention the validity of these benefits to um, efficient supply chain and source to style management, especially when it comes to managing contract renewals. Um, that's a big factor in keeping costs down and keeping supply relationships strong um, and keeping supply chain and back office efficiency um, at its highest. Um, and I'm going to go into this a little bit more later on, but I want to um, go into the adverse of that, when companies are facing a decision whether they automate and then they choose not to. This figure shows um, the greatest barrier to adoption of sourcing automation. And the top one was lack of budget. Um, and the second one was that we do not believe there are enough sourcing engagements to warrant the investment of a solution. And the third is the lack of understanding among current solutions. Um, there's also current processes that are working. And a lot of these are very similar to things we've seen across um, different financial automation solutions. Um, and a lot of it really stems from a lack of education on what's on the market today as far as 
uh, affordable solutions, as well as the ROI possible when you do automate. And I think we're going to get into that a little bit more later, but I wanted to bring in um, Chris. I wanted to see, I know you deal with a lot of um, potential customers that probably have some of these concerns. Do they look familiar, and are you seeing anything else in the market today from companies um, contemplating automation? Yeah, these are uh, these are definitely some of the concerns. You know, uh, I think lack of budget is an interesting concern and one we hear about a lot. Uh, when I talk to prospects about lack lack of budget, I usually like to focus on risk or uh, the risk of not upgrading, right? And so, if you you think about kind of the opportunities lost there, uh, whether it's the lack of visibility in the contracts that auto renew or evergreen contracts, and even if you want to stay with a incumbent vendor. Even just putting that out to bid and, and putting some pressure on them to negotiate better rates um, can provide a lot of savings, right? Um, as well as just without a without a tool not being able to see, um, am I getting billed at the correct amount? Are the obligations that are in this contract being upheld? Uh, a lot of that information uh, can be missed. Um, and so what we try to do is work with our prospects to look at some of these that have happened in the past to build an ROI calculator to then build a uh, argument for the budget needed to this. And uh, I wanted to ask uh, Amy, I know, um, did you guys have any of these concerns when you made the decision to to join Determine or select Determine as a solution? Uh, yeah, we, we did. Um, our biggest issue was that um, we really had concerns about risk management because we didn't have any visibility into our uh, contracts. But we didn't have all the other issues, the lack of budget or any of that. We had full support from our CFO after seeing the tool. Great. Thank you guys for that feedback. All right. So now I'm going to turn it over to Chris and let him take you through um, an overview of how you can sort of approach contract management and switch to settle with a more um, holistic strategy. Um, go ahead, Chris. Thanks, Anna. So I'm going to talk a little more here about uh, contract lifecycle management tools as a whole, as well as managing third-party risk uh, with a contract lifecycle management tool. Uh, one of the things we're going to get into is looking at uh, standalone solutions versus solutions that are integrated with your whole procurement process. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about uh, who Determine is. So Determine is a leading global source to pay and contract management provider. Uh, we have more than 250 global customers uh, spanning industries, including financial services, insurance, pharmaceutical, health healthcare, retail, and so on. Uh, customers use our solution to discover previously unseen contractual spend and supplier data to control costs and maximize savings. By improving workflow efficiencies, we help our customers mitigate risks and empower them to make better, smarter decisions and drive new revenue. So here we're going to talk about uh, standalone solutions and some of the problems we see with them. A lot of companies have what they would call best-in-class standalone solutions, but generally at Determine we disagree with that approach. Uh, if you think about most of your large procurement activities, they all culminate in a contract one way or another. Uh, whether it's a sourcing event and you're purchasing software, for example, there'll be an MSA and SOWs for implementation. Now, even when your customers or your end users are purchasing uh, items against a catalog, those prices will be negotiated beforehand and stored in a contract. So when you think about your procurement activities, the contract is a very important piece of it. And when we look at a standalone solution, um, again, there are a lot of issues can arise. So one, the lack of transparency can create risk. Uh, was I invoiced at the right amount? Am I getting all the correct discounts? Have I hit a budget or spend limit? Uh, with standalone solutions, we see a lot of times integrations required, which can be costly and difficult to maintain. Silos create redundancy, uh, data reentry, and bottlenecks. And really, without that single source of data truth, it becomes difficult when you're working across departments or groups as to which tool or data you should be looking at. And so from our point of view, ideally, you want a centralized source of data. So here uh, what we're looking at is what an integrated solution 
may look like and how that will work together. So let's even just take a look at the first three blocks we see, which would be supplier management, sourcing, and contract management, and how an integrated system would work together to provide um, an easier and better solution for your team. So when we think about a sourcing event, we're going to invite suppliers that already exist in our supplier management tool, our incumbent, maybe some other suppliers we're doing work with. But we'll also most likely invite some prospects or suppliers we uh, don't have MSAs with or haven't done business with in the past. As those suppliers register, there may be NDAs. That's a contract you want to capture and store. Um, but then as we move through the sourcing process and decide to award um, award this event to supplier B, for example, and let's say that supplier has not gone through our onboarding process, with the integrated solution, we can actually do parallel workflows. So I can have my vendor team work on continuing to vet and onboard the supplier, while at the same time my contract management team is starting the contract negotiations with the supplier. But we still are able to then have a safety net where I can start negotiations with the supplier, but I'm not able to send that contract for signature or for final approval until my vendor team has signed off on the supplier. Um, and this kind of parallel workflow really allows us to reduce those bottlenecks to work side by side with our teams and not have to work in kind of the one step, next step, and so on. So it's those kinds of data flows that really uh, benefit, benefit you when you have a, a fully integrated system. And if we look here at this diagram a little more, what you'll see is we have our master data, metadata, uh, business documents layer, which lays below all our different modules. So all the data is in one spot and then shared to different modules. So uh, you can look at a supplier record and see all the contracts that that supplier has. You can look at a contract and easily see all the addition, additional uh, contracts that are attached to that supplier. The same thing happens when we go to uh, invoicing, for example. Are we being invoiced against this contract at the correct rates? Uh, if we can add those rates as part of the contract, then we can force the supplier to only invoice us at the correct rates or correct milestone payments and things like that. So having this fully integrated system really allows you to tie your contracts throughout the whole procurement process. So when we take a look at this slide, it's actually uh, very similar to the slide we looked at before. And the main point here is that contracts are not uh, just something you sign and put in a drawer. They're actively involved in your procurement process, uh, again, from RFIs to purchasing against catalogs um, to compliance. And so when we think about contract lifecycle management, again, it's not something that's filed away once it's signed. Contracts are an integral and valuable asset that can be leveraged throughout the spend-to-pay cycle. And when you have a contract solution that's tied to your other solutions, uh, we think it actually provides what we would call a multiplier effect. And what this does is it enhances vi visibility into potential savings, provides greater awareness for revenue opportunities, uh, more compliant purchases and less rogue spending, and then mitigates your risk at every stage. And so for these reasons, again, we think having this integrated contract tool, part of your P2P platform, uh, is the most beneficial way to go. So in this slide here, we're looking at uh, delivering business results versus specific functions and buttons. And so what we think whenever you're evaluating any of these tools is you should focus on what are the results, what are the goals I'm trying to solve, the problems I'm trying to solve, what business efficiencies are these tools providing for me? Uh, for example, if we're concerned with authoring, then redlining may be a feature that's part of the authoring tool we're trying to improve, but we shouldn't just be focusing on individual features, but keep our eye on what are the goals we're trying to approve, achieve with these, these tools and focus on those. So on these next two slides, I'm going to talk a little bit about what the Determined Platform uh, has to offer. And so the first thing is our platform is built on a proprietary business process management or workflow engine um, or business rule engine. Um, and the point is that it's a dynamic engine that works like the real world. We start with best practices, but the tool is configurable enough to meet each of our customers' needs. Um, and then our authorizations are contextual to the status. And we can see it in the screenshot. Uh, it was sent by Adam, received by Ivan, 
and so on. So here we have our embedded form editor. Uh, and this lets you add any data field you need on any form, whether it's a supplier, contract, certification, and so on. Again, we start with best practices, what we think makes the most sense. But each prospect and customer is different and needs different data points um, for their different contract types, suppliers, what it may be. The really cool part about this is that because it's one data model that hits all of our different modules, you can ask a question on supplier onboarding, ask that same question in an RFP, and if your supplier is already onboarded, the answer will automatically show up there in the RFP because they've already filled it out. So it really allows the data to be everywhere in the system. We also can use this data uh, in searches, approvals, alerts, and reporting. So again, having that data everywhere from contracts to suppliers to sourcing events throughout the entire system is very powerful for our customers. So lastly, we just want to talk a little bit about what you should expect from a, a platform-based CLM tool. Um, you know, the first thing is going to be easily to create and collaborate co with your contracts. The next, uh, simplified search and authoring. So again, make it easy to create the contracts, easy to search and author those contracts. Provide the data in real time. Um, the ability to have the ability to have insights and turn your contracts into decision-making tools. So um, having that information available on the contract to easy, easily see, should we renew this contract or should we put it out to a sourcing event? And that ties into the last piece, which is to fully manage and lever, leverage contracts to maximize value. So the ability to understand, again, should we renew this? Um, are the terms being met? Easily see all that data, have that at your fingertips. Um, those are the things you should be really focusing on when you're looking at a platform-based CLM tool. Okay, and now I'm going to pass it to Amy from Watermarks, one of our customers on the Determine tool, um, and she'll talk more about how she utilizes it. Thank you, Chris. I'd like to start by telling you a little bit about Watermark. We are a senior housing management company. We have 52 locations across the nation. We're recognized as one of the top senior housing owners and operators in the nation. Uh, we've received numerous awards for our design and our programs, such as Thrive Dining. And our mission is to create extraordinary and innovative communities where our residents thrive. Initially, my procurement team and I were tasked with finding a contract solution for our company. And in the process of looking for this solution, we discovered that there were a lot of modules within the new DCP platform that we would be able to implement that would not only help us with our contract management issues, it would also help us with, instead of having disparate systems, we'd have our PO and invoicing and contract and supplier onboarding all in one tool. And this actually has created some major game-changing results that I'll talk about in a little bit. The top four issues that we identified within our organization were issues with contract processing, the manual process of vendor additions and deletions, the rigorous tracking of capital expense and budgets, and the excessive amounts of money that were being spent in our rogue room turns. As I mentioned, we were managing all of our contracts through an email process that was known as black hole. And the issues that we kept experiencing were we were missing key pieces of information on our contracts, the wrong legal entities were being used, statements of work weren't attached, and the execution um, process took a really long time. Uh, the solution to that was implementing CLM, determined CLM, and now we have the tool program to pre-populate all of the legal entities and the DBAs and key bits of information that we were always correcting. And we have automated workflows, and we've also implemented uh, DocuSign uh, in the process as well. So it all flows nicely through the tool. Our second issue was around vendor additions and deletions into our systems. And the major issues were all of our communities were having to pull a manual form off of our intranet and fill it out and uh, submit that to add a vendor. 
Um, we had multiple systems that the vendor had to be added into. Um, and now with SIM through Determine, we are able to send a link to a vendor and they can log into the system and upload their W-9. We can prompt them through a survey to fill out any diversity information they may have and it all flows directly through workflow and goes into our back end general ledger within its API technology. So it's within, it seems like real time, but it's within a 15 minute period of time. And we've eliminated all the manual forms. Our third issue was around capital expense tracking and budgets. We have a project coordinator who manages all of our CapEx budgets through a spreadsheet and Currently, as the PO is entered into the system, our coordinator approves it and logs it and when the project has started and after the invoice hits the coordinator's queue in our AP approval system, then it's marked as paid or finished depending on the job. For projects related to construction, there's typically several invoices because the contractor is billing based on a percentage of completion. And our solution to that now through P2P is that the capital projects are loaded into the system with each PO and each invoice being coded accordingly. And they link to the project and an invoice report can be run at any time to determine the dollars spent and the dollars left to be spent. So there's no longer a need for manual spreadsheets. The fourth issue that we have is around rogue room turn spend. So each of our communities purchased different goods and services through various different contractors and vendors, and it was resulting in non-compliant spend and varying design characteristics of the fixtures. Um, for example, bronze and nickel faucets and fixtures on the same unit and a mixture of different appliance brands, maybe one being white and one being stainless steel. So in order to solve that issue, we consulted with the determined consultants and they did an amazing job of helping us come up with a solution to create multiple shopping carts within the P2P tool. And so now our communities can go into the system and we have a good, better, best, if you will, shopping cart. So there's a silver, gold, and platinum cart that they can click on. And um, depending on the level of the community, um, they can either see one or the other, all three, depending on what type of room turns they do. And when they click on the cart, there's a whole list of the standard fixtures and, and furnishings that they use to do an actual room turn. And now we can track each time a room is Re renovated or um, and how much was spent on it and budget tracking is just that much easier. As you can see, in working with our amazing team at Determine, we have activated an awesome solution and this gives uh, the associates back some time, the time that's better spent developing innovative solutions with our residents and our communities such as this slide you can see here. They are teaching our residents how to use Google and Google Meets. Okay, thank you so much, Amy, for sharing that. Um, and thank you, Chris, as well. And thank you, everyone, for joining us so far. We have a few minutes left that we're going to take some questions that um, I received and put aside during the presentation. Um, I have one from Stephanie, and I think this is a good one for Amy. If you want to kick it off, Amy, um, Stephanie asks, um, she says, we're exploring implementing a more powerful contract management tool, but through many mergers, we've ended up with a lot of different back-end systems to integrate. Any advice for beginning that journey? What do you think, Amy? Yeah, so my main piece of advice would be to make sure that you have all of your processes in place before you're looking for a system to match that. Uh, we have a lot of disparate systems here at Watermark and, you know, in, in our journey of looking for uh, a tool to solve the contract management solution, we ended up finding this great interface that covers everything from supplier onboarding to P2P, so POs and invoicing all the way to pay and contracts are all tied to the vendors and the, and the POs as well. So. As long as you have your processes in place, configuring a system like that makes it that much easier. 
And Chris, do you have any advice? Yeah, I, I think to 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 uh, add on to what you said, I mean, uh, really understanding what your processes are and why you do them becomes really important. You you know, this is a big opportunity whenever you're moving systems to redefine your processes and understand why. Uh, I've done implementations in the past where customers have taken a process that they knew was bad and then tried to move systems um, and implement that bad process. So look at your process, understand were you doing, was this step there because of bad software that you had in the past? Is it, was it there because you didn't have a software tool? Uh, really understand why your process is what it is, uh, why you put those steps in place, um, and use this as an opportunity to not only uh, implement a new tool, but also define uh, better, more streamlined processes, and from there go out and find the tool. Uh, even if you're, you may not be ready to uh, implement the new process all the way, at least understanding that goal um, is, is, can be really beneficial as you, as you start down on this new journey. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right, let's do another one real quick. Um, I have one from Tanya, and I think this is good for you, Chris. Um, Tanya says, you talked about linking suppliers and contracts as a risk management method. Can you talk more about how that works? Yeah, so I think when you look at contracts, right, it's not just suppliers, it's any third parties, so from partners to employees to, uh, if you're a university, for example, students. Um, but when we look at uh, your risk management and how you onboard and then continue to manage uh, your third parties, you know, I think the contract piece becomes very important. For one, uh, most of the time you have an NDA, and so you don't want that just living on the supplier or third party. You want that in your contract repository. Uh, maybe for an employee, you have a you have a non-compete, uh, and you want that as well living in your repository. Um, and then if we look at some more supplier-specific ones, so if you look at a construction supplier, we may define in their contract they need to have a million dollars worth of insurance, liability insurance, and then uh, we want to be able to track those certifications on the supplier as well to make sure the supplier is in compliance uh, while they're on site. So having uh, the third-party information and the contract information on the same tool uh, really helps you mitigate that those types of risks. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. This one is from Gregory, and I think this is good for you, Amy. Um, and Gregory says that he's having – He's worried about the difficulty of getting his staff to switch from how they've always done things to using a new tool. Do you have any guidance around managing that? What do you think, Amy? Uh, yeah, definitely, Anna. I, I think the most important thing um, to note is that you need to have executive management support from day one. They need to be communicating it out to your communities or, or your end users that this tool is on its way and that they fully support it. We have been, I guess, selling it, if you will, every time we're on the phone with our um, members of our communities. We have uh, quarterly summits here at our company, and we have been promoting it at our summits. And I think that once people hear it over and over again and they know that executive management is on board and supporting it, it makes it that much easier to get people to adapt to any change. I think Never to add sense. on here as well, uh, look, I mean, the reality is just change management is hard. We all, we all know that. Um, what I really think one of the big benefits of tools like this is that it takes a lot of the mundane uh, parts of the job um, and lets the software do them. So if you're using e-signatures, you're not having to track people down or ship signatures, right? That's one less thing you have to do during the day. The uh, approval system will automatically remind people they have something to approve so you're not checking emails or sending additional emails. This allows your employees to do more strategic thinking um, and usually allowing your team to be more strategic um, is a, is a big benefit, you know, people like to get away from the main mundane kind of things. So focusing on uh, the time they'll save and the things they'll be able to do with that new time uh, can be a real big benefit and help uh, drive that change. Um, let's do another one. This one is from Leah, and I think it's a good one for Amy again. Can you talk about the integration of electronic signatures um, rather than usual slow manual downloading, signing, scanning, and re-uploading processes? Uh, what do you think about that, Amy, electronic signatures? Yeah, 
Yeah, sure. And, and Chris, Chris just touched on the last one, just efficiencies that have been gained by um, having the integration of electronic signatures in the tool, you know, the time, not having to track people down to sign off on it, it it's, it's really been a game changer for our company. We can now also track the number of contracts that are being uh, signed off on, how long it takes each one in, in the process instead of, you know, uh, just wondering how many are going to come through or how many are up for renewal. You know, the integration of DocuSign has, has just really been one of the best, um, most beneficial and, and time-saving features for us. Great. Thank you. All right. Let's do one more really quick um, and then wrap it up. This one is from Vishal. Um, and he says, for those of us still who still have different versions of contracts, we email back and forth, what's the best way to justify the potential savings um, of a contract management system? Uh, Chris, I think that this one's a good way for you. Yeah, I mean, the reality is there's a lot, a lot of different variables. Obviously, we think um, the justifications are there. But as a good starting off point, if you visit our website, determine.com, we do have an ROI calculator. And by providing some basic information there, uh, you can see some potential savings and efficiency to really uh, kickstart that conversation. Awesome. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, that concludes our time. I want to thank everyone in our audience for joining us and for um, participating, and we really hope you got a lot out of it. And thank you um, for my fellow presenters, uh, Chris and Amy. Really enjoyed your expertise on this topic. Everyone have a great day. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Thank you, Anna. Thanks, Chris.